Well, hello, Nathan. Well, hello. Here we <laughs> are. Back to talk about Dagmar of Denmark, a part three. What you drinking? Here we are. Talk about Dagmar. Here we are. <laughs> talking about Dagmar. What you drinking over there? <laughs> Um, just my usual. I love a good michelada on oh, a weekend. I am drinking Trulies out of a little rubber ducky tumbler. So, <laughs> cheers, bitches. <laughs> Before we get started, let's talk about on Spotify. Did you know you can now go and leave comments on episodes? And then the creators can decide if they want to publish those comments or not? No, I did not. Well... We got a comment that said we were very fake and trashy. I agree. (laughs) Point to the lie. I am in the process of designing some very fake and trashy merch. So, listeners, if you are listening on Spotify and you want to comment on episodes, we love this. So, Nathan, let's be very fake and trashy and get, go ahead and bring our horrible opinions out into the world. How about that? What has ever stopped us before? Nothing. <laughs> Hard nothing. <laughs> Nathan, where did we last leave Dagmar of Denmark in her second part episode? So, her beloved husband, Alexander III, a.k.a. Sasha, a.k.a. Sasha Fierce, had mm. just died. And now her eldest son, Nicholas, is Czar. And little Nicky Poo. He's not ready. He's not that prepared. He ain't ready to be Czar. He ain't ready in the slightest. Yeah. And Dagmar is a little nervous about it. And she's also a little bit nervous because he's made this decision to marry a woman named Alexandra who she is definitely not approving of. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh. She does not get the Dagmar stamp of approval. We have an episode on Alexandra Fyodorovna, so go check that out if you like. Anyway, let's talk about why Dagmar didn't really approve of her new daughter-in-law. Because, um... Let's. Let's. (laughs) Alexandra Fyodorovna didn't have the right kind of temperament. Or at least in Dagmar's Mm. mind. She did not have the right kind of temperament to be Empress of Russia. She's a bit shy. She's a bit moody. When she doesn't get her way. And these aren't personality traits. Like, Dagmar was a very, very popular Empress of Russia. And she's, like girl, you are setting yourself up for failure coming in here acting like that. Oh, God. But do you think any of this got better after her son's wedding? Uh, <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. Y'all, we don't have any official record of Dagmar ever saying anything negative about her daughter-in-law or anything. Right. But let's just put it this way. These two women... We're not friends. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They couldn't have been more different either. Dagmar is bubbly and outgoing. And she loved to go to parties and socialize. Like, her husband just died. She probably doesn't want to be going to state events, but she knows she has to. And these are all traits that, in her mind, make a good empress. Whereas Alexandra is reserved. I think Alexandra Fyodorovna suffered from extreme anxiety issues. Um, oh. oh, yeah, for sure. She, she preferred to stay home, keep to herself. And the Russian nobility and the Russian people, like just the general people, kind of viewed it as like, Does she think she's too good for us? You think you're better than Mm, me? I can can see how that could come across in the loud, boisterous, fun, over-the-top Russian court. You have this Mm -hmm. shy, demure girl. It's like, no, but the women are supposed to love parties because that's how Dagmar was. You know, she was fun. She was bubbly. Like, they are so different. They are so so different. Because Alexander's, like, reserved, keeping to herself. So it just doesn't make sense. Um, She preferred, like, not to go to all these parties. um, But these parties were being thrown 
for her. <laughs> and I wonder why like, people thought she was snobby. <laughs> yeah, right. We're throwing this party for you and you don't want to go. So, yeah, snobby. Snobby yeah. McSnobberson. <laughs> yeah, and if she went, she would be like quiet and not talk to anybody. And it's just like it she was just raised at a different like with a different culture. And honestly, Dagmar didn't really do anything to make the relationship with her daughter-in-law better. <laughs> In Russia, the Dowager Empress is allowed to keep, you know, the crown jewels to drip in jewels out of Guanza for the rest of her life. But it was kind of expected that once there's a new empress, you hand over the jewels to the new empress. Or at least right? some of them. <laughs> but Dagmar, yeah, Nicholas, like, calls up Dagmar. Hey, mom, I need, can you send over those jewels to Alexandra? And she is like, who is this? I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. And <laughs> And I feel like that could have been, like, some kind of, like, peace offering or something like that. Yeah, olive branch, if you will. And so she did eventually send over some of the jewels, but it was all the ones that were, like, uncomfortable to wear. <laughs> or just really, really out of style. Oh, ouch. I know. That's just, like, rubbing salt in the I wound. know. Something I read that I thought was funny. So you know how her sister is Queen of England. So when her sister's husband dies... In England, it is the custom that the Dowager Queen sends the new queen all the crown jewels. And Dagmar was just like, just don't send them. <laughs> her, her sister is like, I have to. It's a different custom here. And Dagmar is like, what are they going to do? Shoot you? No, just keep them. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> This is just a big time for changes for Dagmar. Yeah. She's no longer empress. She's learning to live without her husband. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that did change a little bit, and that was her approach to politics. Because after her husband died, he was the political savvy one. So she kind of yeah. was like, ah, got to do it now. Well, when they were married, she was just sort of like, he knows what the fuck he's mm -hmm. doing. He knows this realm more than I do. I'm going to focus on raising our children and I'm going to focus on my charity. But after Sasha's death, Nicholas like told her straight up, I'm not yet ready to be czar. I know nothing about the business of ruling. So she felt like it okay. was now her responsibility we to educate are herself back. on stuff. Yes. I mean, and sense. we're back to talk about some more <laughs> Yeah, drama. Dagmar's very involved. Oh she knows she needs Nicholas. To step yeah, it up. Nicholas wasn't and Dagmar's. She becomes Nicholas's she was worried about. top advisor, which her second for the first time in her life, she's sickly. Actually, uh, looking at politics, he with was a always eye, and she's like on um, the mend. Yeah, like he was hmm. never. 100 percent kind of off so, here like maybe you yeah. need to get it on came as a shock though because it seemed like he was getting better train. but then he died Choo -choo. suddenly yeah because yeah. dagmar's husband's poor baby he was uh out he felt better so he was out like, riding his Russia. motorcycle no constant and then he just like collapsed and like some monarchy. peasant woman found him on but the now side she of the actually road, has to and he died look in her arms. at the political landscape and like, she's like just like out oh, in no. the countryside oh, riding his motorcycle oh, oh, like yeah. oh honey, oh, honey. Um, and at Dagmar this point she steps in and starts giving her son a and lot she more did not hide it at all which i found interesting because a lot of times when we talk about royalty we're they're very like it's two years don't later, show your and emotions. Don't show your emotions. Um, that was and not Dagmar. It is Denmark's Mother Russia, Mother Russia. Like it is course of action. All of their coronations are at always any point in her life. Um, but it kind of feels like funeral, she was so grief stricken Nicholas that they had to like, compensating. Like he knows her he's not a strong ruler. She was gonna pass out. And then so she you know how like the trope is that the guys with the big trucks have very. And it reminded me, Nicholas was remember when in the first episode. Her the fiance glitziest, died. glamorous, and the she most was like, gold, and she wouldn't let go of the body. They had to like, coronation that Russia has removed her from letting go seen. of his body. 
Um, um, so this is very on brand for her. She she's learned a lot points, about being an empress in the time <laughs> since uh, right. then. But she Monday, has just in she's a she's a bitch that feels her feelings. And as a Pisces, I get six it. To I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Normal, ish, fanfare, like, but I mean, if you look back in history, cool. like maybe a we've seen with two, Elizabeth II when like, Princess Diana died, and whenever you see royalty die, they are stoic as fuck. So it's Don't really know. interesting Who's that Dad didn't do that, and Dowager, to me it's like, did Dowager. she? There's trumpets. Did she like all purposely be like over the top, like you and see at the Irish funerals? Is, yeah, you know, she was over the, the top, wailing yeah. and all that. Honey. No, she's a sad. I, I honestly she's think it's a because she's physically. That's all you need. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, so you're asking if it like calculated so that the people like see her being this great mother and or was it stuck to her? Yeah, I think it was her natural reaction. I don't think it was a show. I think it was probably a little bit of both. I think it was a a calculated choice. Everyone lost their shit. It is like Beatlemania. Wow. That's, and I mean, then Alexandra arrives yeah. in the third um, marriage. Yeah. But, and by that but point, those feelings like, are still well, genuine. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, <laughs> at the same point, like, she's showing their, their emotions out of strategy, I know. but it was like the, the three people that were still genuine. there were like, oh, Compa- uh, the compared to her daughter, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, the bar is. Yeah. In, a few days yeah. after yes. the coronation was an event um, that was a little bit of a sign of things to come. They're all stressing her out a little bit. It's uh, called the Kodinka tragedy, and insisted on it was supposed to be this celebration of the coronation, which was a huge scandal because she was. It a turned out to be a disaster and then, when and they up had been to like fourteen hundred people for like were trampled a really long time, so to death. Kind of romantic, I think. Yeah, and just as many and then people were. Her youngest daughter injured. Olga. Um, yeah, we talked about this was more petitioning for a in divorce, our Alexandra which back in it kind of late eighteen hundreds a divorce couple. Excuse yeah. me, but she had married this guy that was probably gay, and he just married her for and her money, and now he's like in debt, gambling the all the time. Is something and people still debate. She wanted to divorce yeah. him yeah. to, to a marry a commoner, and, and, and she's you know just I mean? like, "What the oh, fuck? Yeah, Why are all my kids out here point. wanting to marry it's commoners? A, it's a bad what the fuck is going it was on?" <laughs> right? <laughs> this is not what no, you're supposed to be doing. No. This time. <laughs> so they went to a party. So like the, even though Dagmar didn't approve of her daughter's death, divorce and remarriage, Dagmar and one of her son-in-laws were the only people from the royal family that actually attended that wedding. The French ambassador had like which kind of says to me palace. that Things yeah that she doesn't agree with it but she's it still gonna support may she's still gonna be there she's gonna she's probably gonna wear black stage, and tell you like <laughs> the entire time like this is a mistake but she's still gonna fucking so, be there uh, they were kind of against the heart rock yes heart, yes but supportive Support a question mark. <laughs> or she'll show up in like all her crown jewels yeah. that she still hasn't given. They Complete speculation because we have <laughs> nothing uh, to document how she felt about this. I think she probably, she was Nicholas's top advisor right now, but he didn't always listen to her. I think she probably said reschedule the party, even if it's a toned down party. But again, we are just, we're just going off vibes. Yes. All vibes. Which could be another tagline for this show. <laughs> No facts, no facts, just vibes. <laughs> Is doubling down now on pushing her son to adopt these more liberal-minded policies. She knew her son just simply did not have that personality to rule like her husband did with that iron yeah. fist. And if they didn't get ahead of this popularity game, it could spell trouble. Yeah, because he Ooh. was... He was not. He got the nickname Bloody Nicholas after this. Ooh. So she's like, hey, maybe well, maybe let's give the peasants some rights or uh, things could go bad. Okay. Well, that was a lot for just the first two years of her son's rule. I want to take a quick break and top off my drink. And then we will be right back. <laughs> 